Hi guys, Harry Sunday here, letting you know that there's a apparel company that supports the game that you love. It's called There Is Only One Football.com, guys. They've got all sorts of stuff from caps, t shirts, water bottles, all sorts of accessories, even for your mobile phone. All that sporting stuff you can wear anywhere you want to wear it, guys. That's right. And don't forget the website it's on There Is Only One Football.com. Yes, guys, welcome to Night Football. This is live again, of course, live. And once again, guys, we have to understand, you have to understand, we've had some a few little issues in the last few weeks. We're not really happy with what's going on with the world at the moment, but we've had to, we've, we've got Chris Calafatidis on my right-hand side right now with us, and I've got a few announcements before we actually uh, want to uh, start the show, guys, because um, uh, we want to make a, an announcement, guys, that uh, during the week, last week, um, well, a couple of days ago, um, Frothy, our host that comes on the show, his wife Patricia passed away and we are deeply saddened about that. He's been on the show for the last three and a half, four years with me and um, we're very sad and uh, we send our respect to the family and to, and to the boys, Matthew and um, of course, um, I for, I'm just lo I'm lost for words, I can't say anything, but she left two boys and Frothy together there and... Uh, we are very sad, and so guys, uh, uh, rest in peace, Patricia was a very nice lady, and uh, yes, uh, that's what happens, I don't know what happens in life, but we're very sad, and I'm very sad, and, and also today, our dear um, um, uh, sponsor, David Ben, there is only one football, he suffered a heart attack, and uh, we hope he gets over this, um, this has been a really hard time for, for Frothy, myself, David Ben, um, and it's, it's, it's just sad, Chris, Sorry to bring you, bring you tonight, and welcome, Chris, uh, to what's happening. Uh, welcome to Football S. So let's get on with the show. Carlos, welcome from Sydney. The S uh, from uh, Planet Football. Welcome, Carlos, as well. Well, thank you, Harry. It has been a, a very difficult week for everyone. And when, when you know, that when it rains, it pours, you know. Yes, I know. But, um, you know, we will navigate this, and I'm sure David... Is receiving the best possible medical yes, yes. care and advice that he will receive in, in SA, and uh, yes. he will come out of it. And uh, yeah, no, because I spoke to him yesterday afternoon. And, That's amazing, and, Carlos. Very amazing. And uh, I saw the email that he sent to South Melbourne about the shirt. Yes. And the controversy about the shirt that uh, yes. South Melbourne is playing hardball, which I think is really silly, but that's a conversation for another day. But let's get on with the show and work. Well, welcome the other football god from yes, Melbourne. Yes, Chris Calavatidis, guys. Give him a hand. I'll give him a hand for sure. And, and, of course, we can't use our system tonight, but uh, we're keeping it low-key because of what's happened in the last couple of days. So how are you, Chris? Of course, we, I know who you are. Carlos knows who you are. The football public during the 19, was it the 70s, know you who you are, and a lot of people are there watching right now. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it's... Uh... Privilege to be here, Paige. Yes. And Carlo. So, Carlos, do you have any questions for, for Chris? Yeah, look, uh, for, for those who are younger than the three of us, <laughs> can you give us a brief summary of who is Chris Kalifatidi? Because, you know, 
if you're in your 50s, you know who we are. But if you're a younger listener, yeah. can you give us a brief synopsis of in three, Chris, who you play for, what are you famous? I mean, I've seen I've seen your football car. That haircut was amazing, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so you still have that hair or just go? He so still can does. you tell us, for those who, who are not familiar with the player from yesteryear, who you play for, what position, yeah. and what were your, your achievements? Yeah, Chris? no. Um, yeah, I, I, look, I only played for one club, South Melbourne. Um, I, I started as a junior there in 73 uh, and became a, a senior player in 76 uh, when we came back from uh, the under-16s, the Perth uh, Championships. Uh, uh, Johnny Margaritas uh, threw me into the senior squad and I, I sat on the bench for about eight games and... Uh, Eventually played a full game in the last game of the season, and uh, from uh, seventy from seventy four onwards, yeah, I've I've been a senior player and played over two hundred games for South Melbourne. Um, yeah, when uh, the uh, Phillips League started in seventy seven, I was part of that, and uh, yeah, uh, I, I was privileged to have one game for Australia in seventy eight. Uh, which uh, was against my uh, homeland. homeland, the Greek side that came out here in 78. Uh, Jimmy Shoulder was the, the Australian coach at the coach. time. Yeah, yeah, at the time. And, uh, yeah, um, we, um, we had a fairly good game, but, we, yeah, we lost 2-1 uh, in uh, circumstances yes. that uh, <laughs> I'm not happy with, but... Uh, <laughs> We have the instigator here, is that right? No, no, it shouldn't be the instigator. <laughs> should never have happened, I know that. Oh, yeah. was it behind the goals, Chris? I was there as a young boy watching you guys. Yeah, no, it was uh no, the forwards in the in the in the, the Greek team they really knew how to how to act and get penalties, you know, without even uh, Oh, the actors, mate. Without even touching them. But the referees they're always uh, you know, um, fooled by them and uh yeah, we uh we lost the game two one. Gary Cole scored our. Uh, we were one one nil up and eventually lost two one. But uh, yeah, uh, Gary did say it was a cracker. No, it was a good goal. Yeah, yeah he no, told no. me. He told us about that on the interview we had him once. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've got a photo of him scoring. Fantastic. Yeah. No. Um, and from then on, uh, had a you know played uh, until eighty one at South Melbourne. Um, we had some highs and lows there. There was a one year that uh, South Melbourne did get relegated, mm. but I don't know how South did it, but we never got relegated. <laughs> they, they, they would never relegate South Melbourne, so we, we stay. We still stayed in the uh, the uh, Phillips League, National League, and uh, uh, then uh, in '81, Rally Rashik was uh, coach of South Melbourne. Mm, it's amazing, and he didn't. Uh, didn't like the way uh, I played or uh, you know, spoke out towards Gee. him, and uh, I I had to leave, and I went to North, went to Northgate City for a year. Yes, and uh, spent a season there, and then in '82, uh, South uh, and Hakawa, the uh, co-tenant, mm -hmm. they yes. merged, yes. and Gee. they asked me to come back to to captain the Hellas Hakawa side in '82, '83. And then after '83, Len McKendry asked me to yes. to to come and uh, be in the senior squad. Uh, we had Alan Davidson oh. uh, uh, away mm. at uh, Nottingham Forest, and it, he was coming back, but he wasn't back in time. So uh, Len uh, brought me into the senior squad, and uh, uh, I was uh, playing all the defensive positions there. And when Alan came back, he he wouldn't drop me because I was I was doing so well, and we won the Ampel Cup that year Gee. with Oscar Crino scoring two goals in the final, um, and then we went on to make the grand final uh, in '84. Uh, Amazing, yeah. So I've got I've got questions for you right now. I just want to ask you now. You you ended up at Hellas, of course, but before that, 
How did you, uh, uh, Chris? You, well, I'm going to say right now, now, yeah. guys. Before Chris, I say something to Chris here. Chris is spelled with a K R I S. So, guys, don't put something down there that's C H I. Is that right? <laughs> so they got it wrong on the footy card. Is that right? Then that's right. Now, let me tell you now, Chris. You played your junior football. Now, this is we're going right back now. Yes. Where'd you play? At uh, South Melbourne Juniors. So. You started right at the beginning at South Melbourne. Age of 13. So you are you are a one-club man. Unbelievable. That's that's very... Carlos, any more? Yeah, can you, can you tell us what position did you play back then? Who were yeah, your no. role models that you looked up in those years to say, yeah. I want to be like the next Messi or the next Beckenbauer? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was more I was a defender. Um, yeah, in, in all the... Right back, left back, sweeper, centre half positions. I, I just played them all. I didn't uh, have one set position. I was a utility player. Um, and Beckenbauer, yeah, obviously, you know, like he was one of the, the greatest players. But South had some uh, good players like your Stevie Walker, Arthur Xanthopoulos, Peter Bedford. You know, like there were some great uh, players back in the 70s there that uh, all defenders that uh, you looked up to and... Uh, yeah, uh, wanted to, yeah, emulate them. So, a one a one team player, one club player. Um, had now I was going to say to you, how did you get to Hellas? You're already at Hellas as a junior. That's right. So that's the thing. So, yeah. uh, you know, the, the the one thing is you would have gone right right up to the ranks. Now, what age group did you start there, Chris? Uh, uh, under 13s. Under 13s. So right through you went up 13s, 13, and that was 14s, 15s, 16s. And then you've got your, your youth league after that as well. Was it 16, 17? No, no. At, at, at the age of 16, under 16s, yes. I did not have not one reserve game. I went straight Jeez. into the senior senior squad and sat on the bench for uh, the seniors with John Margaritas being We the have coach. to stop here right now. And, 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 and uh, right now, guess who's watching from hospital? Uh, from Our sponsor is watching from hospital. David, Ben, welcome from hospital. It means you, you're getting better already. Fantastic. Go on, give you a hand. Here you go, Carlos. He's watching us yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, we have to say no. We have to look, run up the football bus. Exactly. And we get there. We pick people up along the way and send them to the hospital to watch <laughs> exactly. their show with, uh, in, with David, okay? In, in Adelaide, of course. Now, 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 Chris, before I bring Carlos back on, uh, let me just say that um, you, <laughs> Georgie Campbell, does that does George Campbell give you a? Do you recognise this guy? He said that you were his minder. Correct. You were the real minder. Is that right? I was his. You were his big brother. I was his minder on and off the field. Oh my God! No, I I protected George uh, from day one that he came to South Melbourne. Any player that uh, got close to him and started giving him a bit of a. I uh, uh, that that came out, did it? I bet you that came out. <laughs> yeah, I got I got up really close and personal to them and yeah. told him not to touch him. Unbelievable. And then in '81, when I left, poor George broke his leg. Oh, that that. Oh, that. Oh. <laughs> so you were the good luck charm as well. It yeah. must have been the good luck charm no. as well. So go on, Carlos. Now you mentioned two great names in coaching, Margaritas. And mm. Len yep. McKendrick. Yep. Success follows each person. What did Margaritas, how did Margaritas make you a better, play, better player? And how did Len McKendrick continue with your development as a player? Because they're amazing coaches in no, their day. Yeah, and I had a few others as well, you know, like uh, along the way. But uh, yeah, uh, John was a tactician. tactician. He was really tactical and. Yeah, he could change the course of the game uh, uh, during the game. Obviously, if you if you're not winning, he'll he'll do something that uh, you know, like would would get us up there. Len McKendry was more uh, disciplined. You know, like uh, he he you knew before you went on the park what you had to do, and if you didn't implement it, you know, you, you're not part of the team. You know, like and uh, he had. Uh, uh, 11 players on the park that knew what the other was doing and how they were doing it and we uh, watched our backs and uh, uh, he was uh, he was good in that way you know all these coaches you played under I, I, I there's one that sticks out to me the most 
Now, I think he could be the most hated coach at, let's say, Hellas. The most hated coach at Hellas. Now, you're looking at me really funny here. Hated really funny. Coach. The most hated coach. The name Brian Garvey, does that give you a kind of a... A kind of a... a no. Uh, f- familiar, no? Not for me, because I didn't play under Gay. Okay. He came after I left. Brian Garvey. Yeah. So we are talking about... Uh, who was that coach you said before that um, he was telling you things about that you had to... You weren't fast enough. Come on, this is oh, ridiculous. Oh, We're on. talking about a favourite son of South Melbourne here and playing right through the ranks. And he told you to say, oh, I'm going to put some other guy on call, Ange Postacoglu? For yeah. God's sakes. Come yeah. on, Chris, answer this one. No, that, hey. yeah. Led McKendry, yeah. In the grand, That's the in, one. In the grand final of 84, I played every game during the season and then in the grand final, he puts me aside and says, Chris, you know, like... Uh, I'm a bit worried about one of the Sydney Olympic right wingers, Marshall Soper. Oh, so, no, Soper! Oh my God, so, he, he was fast. Yeah, he was. He was this too, wasn't he? Yeah, he, he could throw a few. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I was 26 at the time, and I, I thought I, would, you know, I did quite well. I played 30 games in a row. That's old. Um, and he says to me, Chris, you'll understand one day when you're a coach, the decisions that you've got to make, and I'm going to put in a younger fella. And I go, well, you know, like I, I, I accepted it. And the younger, younger fella was Andrew Postelcoglu. And the rest is history with him. You know, like. So he got his opportunity at what age, did you say? It was 19. 19. Was, yeah. So he went right through as a... But he didn't start at, at South Melbourne, did he? He didn't start no, there. I, I don't know his, uh, his junior background. Yeah, no. yeah. Um, all I know is uh, he was there in... 84 as a 19 year old and yes. uh, he continued player coach and mm-hmm. also yeah did quite he did very well for himself Carlos yeah look football is a simple game 11 against 11 but what's the main difference that you see between your playing days and the current or the new A league which has been going for the last 15 years what's the main differences that you see tactically and playing style, perhaps. Yeah, look, the the main difference is the players are, are very uh, fit. You know, like you, you've got to be an athlete uh, in today's current uh, game. Uh, back in our days, in the late seventies, uh, early eighties, you know, like uh, if you had a bit of skill, you could get by, but. Um, Fitness or an athlete, we had one or two or three in the team. All the others, they could, they knew how to play soccer. You know, they had the technique. They they were, you know, incredible uh, uh, ball players. Today's uh, players are players, more. Yeah, they're more. They're, tra- they're, tra- they're tra- athletes, and they're you know, like to me, you know, they. They, they run all day and chase all day and, you know, like, uh, I think that's the biggest difference uh, uh, from back in the early days to the uh, current uh, days, uh, Carlo. So you mentioned there were athletes. Yes. And because when you, it, a lot of teams are playing this high pressing game. Yes. Which means you press from, you press from the front and therefore you have to be, extremely fit to run up and down. And Angela Postacoglu is the best example of this high-pressing game. Yes. Have we lost the flair or is flair part of the new athlete at the moment? Because the, the X factor. The X factor no, I, I think we've lost our flair. I think we have. You know, like we're more robotic now and uh, mm. uh, it's it's not there, Carlo. You know, um and that's why, uh, you know, we, we a lot of players go abroad, you know, to try and uh, make a name for themselves, uh, try and uh, improve their their, uh, their their soccer skill, uh, and that's and you know, we need we need it here. Exactly. I'm going to go back, Chris, right now to 1978. It could be 77, 78, right now. I, as a young kid, I'm thinking it's 78 or I would say 78. Here I am. I told my dad, who worked at Ford for many years, Ford made a company. And a so lot did of group, my dad. <laughs> oh, we've got to talk about this later on. <laughs> now, 
Now, I'm not sure, he knows you. Now, the thing is, I said, Dad, please, you've got to take me to Middle Park. I've got to see these guys. I've got to see South Melbourne. What did I do? Chris, I made my own flag, my own stitching, my own everything. My God, I was a South Melbourne idiot, of course, and that's what we were at that time. You know what was going on. The trumpet, the yep. people screaming, yep. the Savlakis when you walk through. Oh, I'm hungry. I've got to eat. You know, I've got a Savlaki. But you know what happened? I went to that game for one reason, to look at one of these best players, probably the best player in England at the time, the most highest paid player at, at South Melbourne, coming from Liverpool, my God, man, Alan Evans. Alan Evans. Did you ever expect to see a star like that? You, you, would, you would have been, I've got a soccer god here and I'm going to play with him. Is that right? That's correct, yeah. How Alan. did you feel when he came on? He was awesome. He was awesome, you know, like just looking at the man and just uh, uh, um, seeing his stature, seeing oh, his, uh, his, his ability uh, uh, as a true centre forward, you know, um, he was unbelievable. He was uh, really one of the best players that ever came. I'll bring Carlos in a sec, but let me tell you, let me tell you, here I am on the site, we're talking about not the grandstand side, but the other side where the steps are, right? Yeah, yeah. Step. Other side, that, that other entrance there. Yeah, yeah. Here I am in the middle there. There's the first corner. Who who actually, was it George who, who did the corner? That first corner? Was it Georgie? He put yeah, the, yeah, he, George, he yeah. crossed it? Yeah. Alan Emmons was, bang. Yeah. Goal, first yeah. That was a couple of minutes. Yeah. You remember that goal? Mate, that that was like no competition whatsoever. And he was like, no, bang. No, nah, he was terrific. He was, Carlos, this, honestly, uh, if you, you, you remember the, the name Alan Evans from Liverpool playing at South Melbourne, Ali, uh, uh, Carlos? Well, I, th I didn't have the pleasure of seeing Unbelievable. Alan in the flesh, but he was, um, he was a player of great pedigree. And one of the things that the, the NSL did really well was to bring guest players to raise the level of awareness and improve the playing standards of of the of the NSL. But Chris, the Olinisa had lots of highlights and yet after the after a successful start we just lost our way and it shut down in your view, what went wrong in the later years of the NSL? Yeah, um, there was uh, a lot of ethnic uh, war that uh, didn't, didn't help tension and uh, the crowds and what have you. And, the, uh, yeah, the, the, the supporters lost their way. Uh, too many... Uh, Macedonian, uh, Greeks, uh, Yugoslavs, uh, uh, yeah, it just, it, we lost our way there and uh, football just uh, uh, went backwards, a absolutely went backwards. Uh, uh, it's good to see families are coming back a little bit into, into the, uh, the A-League uh, now, where mum's coming with a, a couple of kids and that, uh, and, and that's good to see, but... Uh, Back in the early days, I, I think that spoiled the uh, uh, the, the soccer, and uh, yeah, they're, they're slowly getting there. They're slowly, slowly raising the game for the families. But um, you're talking about uh, guest players that come out, Carlo. I was yes. uh, I was uh, involved in the game in 1977 when South brought out. Malcolm McDonald. That's right on my list. Thank you Super for Mac. saying it. Super Mac. Super Mac. Yeah. Super Mac. Super. Remember and that? Super Mac and uh, Budapest, uh, St. George, brought out Charlie George. Oh, my God. Middle Park, capacity crowd. Oh. It was just unbelievable atmosphere. It, you know, like, and, and that's what it needed at the time, you know, when we first started, you know. Um, it was a game that you'll never forget. Uh, it was a brilliant game, a lot, lot of goals. But uh, there was also another game that uh, would we, we, I, I, I won't forget, and that was a player at Adelaide City brought out called Dixie Deans. Yes. He was uh, a little uh, five foot seven, eight, little tank. He was a goal scoring machine, and uh, he. Uh, he, uh, I, I was always given the task to, to mind all these uh, guest uh, overseas players and the corner, the first corner of the game, I've gone up to line up next to him. Yes. I, I, I said, g'day Dixie. 
and with without without response, he gives me this left hook. Oh, breaks my nose. Oh my god! I'm on the ground, and you know, like took me a few uh, seconds to so like fire. What's going on? You, you know, you, where, where am I? You were saying nice things to him. Yeah, I was trying you to. You should have said, I'm going to bash you. And it would have been, <laughs> would have been the other way. You would have got here. <laughs> what is this? Anyway. The English. This is the English stuff. At that time, they were rough as guts, weren't they? Uh, the English he, he, he the first division. In, in Scotland as well for uh, quite a few oh years. God. But anyway, I got up and I was, I was, I was uh, the white uh, jumper, blood everywhere. Oh, my God. Chris. There was no blood rule at the time. No. No. So I started... Uh, um, giving him a few kidney punches and re- hitting him in the head a couple of times, and Can't uh, believe it. Um, he calls out to the linesman, "Hey, linesman, look at this player. He's uh, you know he's doing all this." And the linesman says, "It's all right, Chris. Keep doing it. I'm not going to say anything." You, you should have given it to him. I you was should, fantastic. Oh my god, man! It was, so he thought he, he must have seen what was going on, and they didn't tell the referee. So he said, "You go for oh, it, you, mate." You could tell with all the blood. Of on course, me. my god, man! Were you wearing a white shirt that yeah, day? Yeah. Oh my god, Carlos, go for it. <sighs> so this uh, star, this impl- this guest player, how do they make you a better player, Chris? A su- McDonald, yeah. Dixie oh, Deans, oh, I don't know. What did you learn from them? Oh, or how I, did I, they I, no, no, improve you? Even at training, you know, like uh, we used to, um, he used to take uh, uh, attack against defence, and uh, we used to, he used to tell me, you know, like uh, as a forward, he used to tell me what he was going to do, where he was going to run, and that, and, and he'd tell me, this is what you have to be there before I, I get there, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, yes. And uh, you become a better player when you play against better play, uh, play better forwards or better teams. Yes. So it's only natural that you know if you've got some ability, but uh, th- they were always helping as much as they could, you know. Yeah. And I, I want to I want to go back to you that you you played one game for the Socceroos, of course. Now, I was a bit disappointed when I heard before that they wouldn't let you allow you to at least take one kit home. One kit, for even the shorts yeah. they were keeping, everything yeah. they were keeping there, Chris. Yeah, they, I can't believe this. Yeah, they, we weren't allowed uh, to take out tops or shorts. Or, oh, my God. Yeah, so I, I snuck a pair of socks in my bag and just... Uh, Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Sir Arthur George didn't see it, did he? <laughs> I can imagine that they did. Okay. Now, also, what I want to ask you is, that game... Um, I want, uh, nobody knows about this guy. And Carlos, you would, I don't know whether you know the name of this coach, Jim Shoulder. Nobody knows, he a, was, lot of, nobody knows a lot about him, Carlos. And this is where, this is well, where Chris he, can tell us. Look, um, um, he was, okay, when, when Riley Rasich didn't get reappointed, mm. we, we had this other guy called Green who came from nowhere from England and he was sent home because of shoplifting. Oh, what? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And then Jeez. this guy, Jimmy Shoulder, who was original from Sunderland, you know, he came from nowhere, but no one knows. But he was a failure because he didn't. Success is judged by the qualification to the World Cup. Correct. Mm. And he didn't get us there, but there was a lot of rumours that he just did it. He was... He was out of his depth. Anyway, he got he was a national coach. But mm. he was, you know, when Riley didn't get... Because, obviously, history will show there was a falling out between the patriarch of football, third Arthur George oh. and Riley. And Arthur George ran the SFS with a tight, you know, iron rule fist, my way or the highway. That's right. But Jimmy Shoulder was... You know, appointed. You know, he didn't set the world on fire. We lost at home. Thing took your weight and a few other places in World Cup qualifiers, <coughs> and we didn't qualify. But you, you play for the Socceroos, and so can you? How when you play for the Socceroos, how did you get notified? You got selected. Was a telegram, a phone call, mm-hmm. and what was your reaction to being selected to play for the national team in Melbourne? Against Greece. Yes, no, uh, by telegram, correct. Gee. Yeah, they. Uh, Have you still got it? I've still got it. Fantastic. Yeah, you I've, should frame it. You framed it. I've got it in my scrapbook. Oh my god, fantastic! I've got three, unbelievable. Three scrapbooks. You yeah. should you should take a photo and send it to us. 
this oh, is a, if, if you yes, want. please, because this is what this is what we put on. We want to know the history of how players got where and where they've gone and played for the soccer is. And and that at that time, and Carlos, you would know that time, there wasn't mobile phones no. at the time, so no, they had to find you. So, they had to find you somewhere. Is that right, Carlos? What was that? They had to find you somewhere. There's no mobile phones or pages in those days. No, so no, they had absolutely. To find, they had to find you so, somewhere real quick. Chris, can you take us through your emotions? Someone knocks on your door. I assume knocks, hands over a telegram to you or to your mother or father. Yeah, you no. open this telegram. Did you cry? Did you throw the fist in the air? Yes, yes. What were your emotions? What, no, well, what, see, prior to then, we, we were training as well. You know, we, we had some training sessions mm -hmm. and we uh, had to make the squad. Uh -huh. So that's how, you know, like uh, we knew we were in the, the process of uh, being in the, you know, uh, first 18 or something like that. So, um, yeah, w once once we got the uh, the, the telegram, uh, we expected uh, a yes or a no. And, and we got the OK. And then a couple of days later, uh, the the... A whole team squad came with all the names and who who got uh, selected and that. So it was a fantastic moment uh, for me, you know, like a, a, a young Greek boy here playing against. Uh, uh, well, they, yeah, uh, those Greeks with yeah. big, big names and lots of money in in, those, in that era too. Yeah, no, uh, that's right. So um, I um, I was twenty at the time in seventy eight. So. Um, very emotional, but you know, like sensible. You know, like I wasn't uh, uh, over the moon. I was over the moon, but I, I knew I had to do a job, do a, you know, play well and consolidate my team, uh, my place yes, in the yes, team. Yes. So, yeah. What I want to say is too, before I bring Carlos back on. Now, how is it that Greek Australian being selected to play against Greece? <laughs> okay, now, as you got on the field. They would have said they would have said the names. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Now, you would have heard all those Greek names on one side, and these guys are saying, "Oh, oh, hello. There's somebody here from our homeland. What's he playing there for? Did they have a go at you on the ground at any stage? Did they say anything to you at all? Uh, they must have said something. Well, if they did, I didn't understand them. <laughs> uh, I, I wasn't a, a very big uh, Greek-speaking person at the oh, time. Yeah, okay. Uh, you know, like I, I. I um, at the age of five, I knew a lot of Greek, and then after I went to school, I, I lost it all. Uh huh. Um, Just like me, don't worry. Yeah, so it wasn't, uh, uh, no, you know, like. Uh, what were they like towards you on the ground? They knew you were probably Greek. And what no, no, they... no, see, uh, on the ground, when I stepped onto the ground with the Australian jumper, I, yeah. I, I grew 10 foot tall. Yes. You know, like I was ready to, you know. Uh, Eat anybody, you know. Exactly. Like no, no one would go past. The me. elbows are up. There you go. No one exactly. would go past. That's me. right. And uh, and no one did, you know. Like, Jesus. Uh, but uh, yeah. So no, they uh, they play. They came to play some soccer too, you know. Like mm, they, yes. they weren't there to, you know. Full professionals. Of yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's right. So it's it's not uh, what they say or do to you, to you. You just play the game yeah, and, yeah. and play the ball hard and uh, yeah. So. Um, yeah. Yeah, can you make Carlos? What was the main difference between playing for South Melbourne in the NSL and playing for the national team against a very good Greek side? No, no. Um, I, I always gave my hundred percent with uh, South Melbourne, and the same the, the the national side, the the Australian side. Well, that's another level of a game, you know. Like yeah, yes, as I said, I I grew. Ten foot tall when I was uh, had the Australian uh, jumper on, uh, and and with the South Melbourne, I was still, you know, I was proud to to wear the South Melbourne uh, jersey there for over two hundred games, you know, like so. Um, it, it's it's only playing for your country, playing for your you know the best team in Australia. But was this, was the level of football different, faster? Oh yeah, more oh, technical. Yeah. It, it was a lot faster and technical when you when you come step up into uh, you know play for your country. Oh, it's 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 uh, a lot faster, a lot technical, better players, and um, at the uh, team level, we we had some good players, 
not 11 players like you do have for a country. You know, you have, you know, maybe three or four or, or you know, good players at a team level. But, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's different. It's a lot different. So on that day in, 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 70, in 78, of course, yep. going back, to, uh, the, the, we are talking about, uh, and Carlos, you would know this, the biggest Greek-speaking city in the world. Yes. And here are the Greeks playing, the Greek uh, Australian players playing for Australia. How, <laughs> I can imagine, what was the crowd going on about? Were they saying, Austro Socceroos, or were they screaming Greece? What was going, you know yourself, I could hear it. Yeah, no. I was screaming for, for Greece, and you guys were like, you know what I mean? It's like, hang on, we're here too, you know? Yeah. Is that right? What was yeah. it like with the crowd? Uh, no, the, uh, the Greek fans love the, uh, uh, the, their soccer. Yes, and uh, they'll support their nation. Yes, you know, thick and thin. So, uh, I, I thought it was fair, but you know, like you could have sworn you were in Greece rather. Than yes, <laughs> yes, that's what I thought too. Exactly. I mean, you you played with play, players that day. Was Arthur McMillan? McMillan did he play that day with you? McMillan, Gary Cole. Well, no, Gary Cole did. No, uh, George Christopoulos. You said yeah, once. he. he George Christopoulos. Peter Lumitz, of course. Peter was in goal. Oh, so I saw him right behind me and I was there. I was there right behind him. That's yeah, right there. Yeah, no. Um, I've got the team written down, but uh, it was so many. It was uh, So many years ago. That's what I understand. That. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there was players. It was Jimmy it, Tansy played. Murray, Murray Barnes. No, he wasn't no, no, at that no, time. No no. no, no, no. No, he was earlier, I think. No, yeah. no. Uh, Piccioni. There was... Uh, uh, it was a fairly youngish Australian Very squad. young. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It wasn't... Uh, uh, so the South Melbourne, the South Melbourne boys were you and George Christopoulos. Yes, there was no one else. Only the two boys. Uh, was Peter Lomitz? Peter, yeah, Lomitz was South Melbourne too. Yeah, yes, no, he Pete, was. That's the, right. The, yes, the three of us. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carlos, do you have any more for the uh, for um, uh, Chris? Well, how long do we have? Uh, we got a lot of Mr. time. Harris. We're still going to twenty minutes at least if we want to use it. It's up to us. So, yes, one. Appearance for Australia. Yes. What happened after that? Did you yeah, well, no, no, deep well, in form, or is it just the way the coaches select the national team? Yes. That you are not fortunate enough to be picked again. What? Okay. When you so, look back, Carl, what went wrong, perhaps? I uh, know, uh, Carlo. What what happened? Uh, Jimmy Shoulder got the bullet. Oh, Ru that's right. Jimmy Shoulder was. Uh, Sack. Rudy Gutendorf come in. Oh, Correct. No. Rudy oh. Gutendorf. I want to pray now, actually. And he was a Sydney-based coach, or he loved the He's Sydney. Seventy-nine, players. yeah, in seventy-nine, yeah. Yeah, and uh, he, we, we got invited up to some camps in Sydney. We spent a couple of weeks in camps in Sydney. There was over a hundred players that he wanted to to uh, have a look at, uh, and each uh, couple of days he would cut the squad down to. Yeah, you know, eighty, sixty, forty, and and the final twenty or eighteen. So uh, fair enough. I I, um, I lasted till the 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 cut of forty players. Yep. Um, ah. And then uh, uh, because of my age, and uh, he had defenders that were so like uh, a lot more experienced than what I was, and going to a World Cup. Uh, he decided uh, Manfred Schaefer and Peter Wilson were, you know, like uh, better... See, centre-backs, uh, yeah, yeah. I have a question here for you. This is very interesting, Carlos. I have uh, Alex Evangelides is one of our greatest members on our site here. And Alex says, Alex, uh, Alex says, ask Cosmina about Rudy Goodendorf. <laughs> Did you know that story? No, no, I don't. No, oh, I don't. boy, we ought to ask him one day. Yeah, Johnny, Johnny, because me and myself, we, we had a great rivalry, the two of us, even at the age of uh, 21, we were fighting for the uh, best youth player in the whole of Australia. Yes, yes. Um, Johnny Kazmina uh, was at West Adelaide and scored a lot mm. of goals and played for Australia, and I was at South Melbourne, and the two of us were selected to... Uh, the best under-21 player. Yes. Um, and I loved playing against Johnny uh, Kismina because he, he was the top forward here in Australia mm -hmm. and I loved playing against yep. players yep. like that. But uh, and, and Johnny won the a trophy mm -hmm. um, for scoring goals for Australia. And, Gee, uh, fantastic. Uh, play, yeah, so Johnny Kismina is a good, good mate of mine. So good, good player. Now, I want to ask you, before I bring Carlos back on again, uh, coaches that you were under, now, did... now. This is where I want to go now. 
you did train under Goodendorf, is that right? Yes, I did. He was that crazy, I've heard. He was really mad, because I know for a fact what... <laughs> they went... You didn't go to Greece. The others did go to Greece. They went to Greece, and, and we had Gary Cole, and Gary Cole... I said, Gary, is it true that uh, um, at the, Olymp I think the Olympic Stadium in Greece... When Australia went and played there, throwing bottles at everybody or something, and and uh, Rudy Goodendorf went halfway down the ground with a chair and threw it at the referee. Oh wow! Yeah, and, and Gary told us that story. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That was knew, amazing. Never I never knew that. Well, so, well, and my, had to, go on, Carlos. My memory of that game is that this plate of my memory of a Greek Greece v Australia game was the great Damasos. Uh huh. And, and somehow the mate. There was a blatant refereeing decision, and the masters of the Greek of the Greek national team gets a penalty from nowhere. Yes, yes. Yeah, and having I his, mean, I remember it was I a, saw that in replay. Athens or where, but I remember the name Domasos, and yes, he was like obviously the god of Greek football. Last oh, game, and who's on there? there was a blatant a refereeing decision that went yeah, Domasos' yes. way, but I can't remember it was it's a penalty was the, or ended an up being... offside. Carlos, that ended up being two all, didn't it? Because Gary said to me they would have won the game in Greece, but that bloody yeah, penalty that's came up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, that's why I saw the replay. Actually, yes, yes, I can. And then Rudy came on the ground through a bloody chair. <laughs> that's yeah, right. Unbelievable. And I uh, guess who's on right now watching us, guys? Uh, the nineteen, I think the nineteen eighty eight. I think it is. We had Mark Cousas on. Mark Cousas. He was a Golden Boot winner in one of the Youth World Cups in Australia. So welcome, Mark, to the show again. Watching. Uh, um, Chris Calavatidis tonight. There you go. We've got one uh, star just like yourself there. There you go. Yeah. Do you know Mark? I know his name, but yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. in 84, I stopped at South in Yes, 84. yes, yes, yes. He was a Sydney Olympic, though. You know, that's the opposition. Oh, of yes, course. for sure. Your games, the games that you played in that second year of the, of the of, we're talking the Phillips League, not the yeah, NSL, no, the Phillips no, League. Phillips, Phillips League. League, exactly. Yeah. Don't get that. People get that wrong. The NSL, it's not the NSL at that time. Phillips, it's top Phillips. Soccer. Phillips Top Soccer, the show was on there at night time. Uh, Phillips, the Phillips Soccer League. Now, you had, uh, we're talking the second year of the uh, uh, that competition, the first national competition ever, ever in this country. No AFL, no rugby league, no nothing. That was the, the only competition of its national kind of in the country. The games, what were they like? Were they tough, rough, rough as guts, of course? But we're talking about the second year of this. Was it injuries, people fighting on the ground? Uh, lots of lots of ethnic background people going crazy. Sorry, uh, yeah. their clubs and everything. You must yeah. have heard the crowds and everything in that, that year. That's right. There were, but that was off the ground. You know, yes, like yes, that, yes. That we went there to play soccer, and there yes. were some great teams and great uh, players and games that we were. In. But you know, we, we we left all the. Oh yes, yes, yes. But what was one of the matches that you can remember was a really tough game, and and their players were really going for it. Oh, they were all tough game. Uh, in 78? Yes. Tough games. They're all tough games. I, I haven't got any... Uh, no. Against the Olympic, it was always going to be some kind of... Oh, uh, always uh, argy-bargy on the ground and, and uh, pe people going for it, uh, as in as in scoring goals, winning. It, and it was all for winning. You know, yeah, it was Yeah, of course all. it was. Yeah, no, no. There was always a rivalry with uh, Sydney Olympic. Yeah. Always. And we are talking about, of course, we're going to talk about Fitzroy United. My God, man. We're not talking Heidelberg United here. Fitzroy United. What was it like between Fitzroy United and South Melbourne in those days? You know what it was like. Oh, Derby games. Are, there's, the, there's the shirt that you would have seen. That's right. Derby games are always tough, mate. You know, like uh, uh, really, really uh, hard fought. But, yeah. Those, uh, those, those were the days in those games. Carl, um, Carlos. Now, 200 games... For South Melbourne, is there a game that brings you goosebumps mm -hmm. every time you look back, and another game that brings you tears of despair? Well, uh, there were two games, goosebumps, and that was the Malcolm McDonald and uh, Charlie George game, eighteen thousand Olympic Park, and, and then in in seventy six when uh, South were the uh, champions of the. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, one of the divisions. Victorian Premier League. Yeah, and then Saint uh, Saint George were the premiers of the Sydney News as well. Yeah. Yes. So what happens at the end of the season? The two of them get together and have uh, around one one in Sydney, one in Melbourne. Yes. So uh, we did that. Uh, 
drew one all with them in Sydney and then they come down to Melbourne here and uh, yeah we um, we were lucky enough to to beat them here two one and I scored the winning goal Jim. a Jimmy Mackay corner come Jimmy Mackay. floating over a corner in the 88th minute and Arthur Xanthopoulos was going to header it and I called out to Arthur he left it and I volleyed it from oh, the 18 yard box Jesus. right into the top oh. corner oh. They're, they're games that you'll never forget. That's a know. sweet kick of a ball, volleying a ball. You know what it's like, don't you? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, my all, God. All you heard, I'm getting mate. goosebumps here. Yeah. I know, all me too, heard, me too. All, all you heard was bang. bang. Yeah, I know. It's like a cricket ball a, a cricket ball hitting a bat. And it was unbelievable. And then when it went in, and then I had all the South Melbourne fans run onto the field and just uh, went, crazy. went crazy. By the end of the, the, uh, the, the referee telling them to leave, I had... Peanuts and uh, lollies and all in my hands. They all oh, just gave me supporters gave you energy food to keep going. <laughs> energy on the field. It was just unbelievable. Oh and, then, and then after the game, would you believe, uh, the supporters came back on and one of the uh, supporters grabbed me and put me on his shoulders. Oh, my God. And and we started uh, running around the, the whole uh, oval. Um, and to tell you a little bit, my son played for Collingwood City. Oh, Yes. And uh, my, uh, while I was there, I was watching my son. The guy taps me on the shoulder. He goes, Chris, do you know who I am? I go, nope. no, sorry, I don't know who you are. <laughs> he goes, I'm the guy that had you on the shoulder running around. Oh. <laughs> and I go, you're joking. Oh, my God. They, they're the things that you, you remember. Do. My God. What a, and, and, and this is what I'll tell you, Carlos, as well. They are the times... That the supporters are passionate. Yeah. Not now. You don't see nothing like this now. You know. You don't see. You don't see. I remember a, a game where uh, Chris uh, Chris Kalanzas kicks a goal in one of the finals against Marconi or something in uh, in Sydney, and the, and the whole Olympic crowd is jumping over the fence, yep. hugging him and everything. We don't see that well, no more. You know, Carlos. No, and I think I think um, because of a, a number of unfortunate incidents where fans have jumped the fence to cause mm. mayhem, we now seems to be protecting yeah. the players a lot more and it's less acceptable. But it is that passion. And you have to remember, that generation that jumped the fence was probably the, the new... The new migrants that arrived in the mm. 60s and 70s. Nowadays, we have third generation Greek Australians whose passion for the game is perhaps diluted because we are very assimilated into mainstream. Mm. So the nature of the football fan has changed altogether. We get saturation coverage on TV, you know, Facebook, whatever. Back then, unless you were the game, you missed out. So that's the difference between the fans today, perhaps, and the fans of yesteryear. You didn't have the saturation coverage. You have to be there to be part of history. Yes. And you jumped the fence, and you jumped the fence. Now, you know, it's a different different football family. I don't know what you think, Chris, about it, but I think it's... No, no, I agree with you. The generation totally, has changed. Totally agree. Totally agree. Uh, no, everything that you said is passionate, and 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 we've lost that in the game. But it's always going to be where officials will change this and change that, and 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 even in the A League, they've uh, they've said uh, we don't want to see too much happening on the uh, the support groups now with the A League as well. They're quieting them down as well. Yeah, not being as as abrupt or sort of like a. Whatever's happening in the past with the NSL, but I can remember the uh, Pratton Park. Was that Pratton Park <laughs> Olympic and uh, Hakawa? My God, the, the people jumping the fences and and fighting. Do you remember that seeing that at all? Yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And 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 of course, I think Carlos, you were there, weren't you, at that time where uh, they were chasing the goalkeeper? Was it? Tony, yeah, yeah, Tony yeah, Bizar Pisano Tony was running, Pisano running, for, his was running for his life and everything. And yeah. it's all on it's all on YouTube. I don't want to talk about it. But no, I remember... no, no. But it's probably the biggest event that set football back yes. or the growth of football back by 10 15 years yes because for if mainstream australia got totally spooked 
a lot of mums and dads says, we're not taking it to the football anymore because it's not safe. So that was perhaps the event that set football, set hamper the growth of football because, you know, that was Tommy Doherty days. Yes. It was, hey, you know, Pratton Park was bursting at the seams. Mm, yeah. Playing, Olympic was playing great football. Played, Everyone was played, coming no, and yet... It, but... We didn't. We didn't grasp the mo- We didn't grasp that moment to run with it. We allowed one incident for. Yeah, the referee was at fault. It there was a number of issues that led to the pitch invasion. But for whatever reason, it happened, and the growth of football lost its momentum. Right. And I don't think it recovered. And then to me, it was the beginning of the end of the NSL or the Phillips League because mm. after that, you know, we went from a regional, you know, re- we we toyed around with different systems, regional because to save costs and it's just the beginning of the end and then it just wither away. That's right. Now, what I want to say is also is that um, right now tonight, uh, David Ben, we'd like to congratulate David Ben for coming on. Our sponsor's in hospital. He's at an operation and he's watching the, he's watching. Shall we send and- him a shirt? We, we, he's got uh, plenty. I think he Can has we plenty. Buy a shirt I, think, I, think, and send it to him? I think David's got a couple of hundred shirts at home. <laughs> but right now, tonight, we're, we're going to present Chris with some stuff from our sponsor. Chris, we're presenting you with some. Uh, there is only one football cap and uh, there is only one football soccer jersey for you to thank, wear to thank remind you. you of the show and uh, enjoy. I hope you enjoyed the show tonight and everything. Fantastic. And uh, bringing back all these memories that you would have. It's brought, it's brought like Carlos said, it's brought. Uh, uh, goosebumps to us because, mate, it's like soccer, or what do you call it? What do they say? Old soccer, new football? I think old soccer was better than new football as far as I'm concerned. What do you think, Carlos? Well, look, I think you have to look at the generation when football was played. Yes. The grounds that were played. If you look at the 1970 World Cup compared to the World Cup of today and the finals, it was pedestrian football. Yes. So back in the 70s and 80s and early 90s, the NSL was a great spectacle. The grounds were different. The facilities were totally different. Less women were coming to the game. So the the facility for the spectators was a bit, you know, basic to say. Now it's a different game. The, The playing surfaces are immaculate. We have a different crowd, but you just can't... It's like comparing apples and oranges, yes, brother. Yes, yes, it is true, it's true. It is very different era. Pele, you know, 1970 World Cup, pedestrian football Brazil, but he was brilliant. Exactly. So it's just a different era, of full, full stop. It was. Carlos, thank you for tonight for coming on and thank you for helping us... My pleasure. ...to well, what's happening with... Uh, with we, we understand the frothies... Uh, He's grieving right now, and we, uh, we and we send him our best wishes. We're with him. In, we, we're also with him exactly. in the journey. Yeah. Exactly. So, with the journey know, we well. all, everyone would have lost a, a, mm. a loved one throughout the years, and we know the pain and the grieving that we go through. So he's not alone. He, he may feel alone, but the football community also is feeling the pain exactly. that Frothy is feeling. And we'd also like to thank Chris for coming tonight. <laughs> oh, we've got a crowd. That's Chris. They're clapping everywhere. So, Chris, thank you for joining us tonight, guys. Thank Car- you, Chris. And Carlos, we'll thank have you, someone. Carla. Hopefully next week we'll have another guest for you guys out there. I was a bit low-key tonight again, and we kept it low-key because we want to show some respect to David and uh, to Frothy as well. And, guys, don't forget, behind us, what we have here is all on sale on There Is Only One Football. So check out the – Chris, you played against all these clubs. Yes, you I did have. You did all these clubs. Yep, Brisbane City, St. George, Western Suburbs. Fitzroy United, uh, Eastern Suburbs, Akawa, guys, they're all available and there's only one football and don't forget our sponsors. Of course, Sea City Lawyers, the lawyers that come to you. Is that right, Carlos? Yes, if the mountains don't come to me, I'll go to you. <laughs> and also, guys, Arrow Sports, who produces all this stuff and is available also for kit for your, for your kits for your uh, clubs and everything, is also producing the... Heritage shirts for um, uh, There Is Only One Football, guys. Thank you for joining us tonight, and we'll see you next week at 8.30 p.m. Again, the Soccer Psychos will continue. It's all happening next week at 8.30 p.m. Monday. Good night, guys. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.
Hi guys, Harry Sunday here, letting you know that there's a apparel company that supports the game that you love. It's called There Is Only One Football.com, guys. They've got all sorts of stuff from caps, t shirts, water bottles, all sorts of accessories, even for your mobile phone. All that sporting stuff you can wear anywhere you want to wear it, guys. That's right. And don't forget the website it's on There Is Only One Football.com. There is only one football!